What's up guys, Ben here and welcome to Motivation to Invest. Tesla is a stock which has continued to skyrocket to the moon despite criticism of a high valuation. The limitation on Tesla growth is, uh, is cell production at, at an affordable price. And, and, and any part of that, at that supply chain or processing of, of, at the cell level will, will, will be the limiting factor. So from mining to refining, and there's many steps on the ref refining. With, re with regard to passenger vehicles, uh, I, th I think the new normal for range is going to be just in U.S. EPA terms, uh, you know, approximately 300 miles. So I think people will really come to expect that as, um, you know, some number close to 300 miles as, as normal, you know, that, that, that's a standard expectation. Um, uh, because you do need to take into account, like, you know, is it very hot outside or very cold or, you know, do, are you driving up a tall mountain? Um, and just there's like two general classes of, of cell. There's like the iron phosphate and then the nickel based. Uh, nic the nic nickel based cells have um, higher energy density, so longer range. Um, obviously, those are needed for something like the semi, um, where, you know, every Every unit of mass that you add in battery pack, you have to subtract in cargo. So you, it's very important to have a mass efficient and long range uh, pack for, for batteries. Um, however, what we're seeing with uh, our passenger vehicles is that our powertrain efficiency and uh, sort of tire efficiency, you know, drag coefficient, like basically all of the th things that, like, you know, our HVAC uh, go, going to a heat pump, um, Basically, our total vehicle efficiency has gotten good enough with uh, Model 3, for example, that we actually are comfortable having an iron phosphate battery pack in Model 3 in China, um, and you know and that that'll be in volume production later this year. Um, so we think that you know getting a range uh, that is in the high 200s, uh, you know, basically, but we think you probably get a, a range of almost 300 miles. Uh, with an iron phosphate pack, taking into account a whole bunch of uh, of powertrain and other vehicle efficiencies, um, and and that that frees up a lot of capacity for things like the Tesla Semi, um, and and uh, you know other projects that require higher energy density. You have like two two supply chains that you can tap into: iron phosphate or or, or nickel. Um, we use very little cobalt in in, in our system already, and that's that may trend, you know, to zero along. So it's just really about nickel. Uh, solar, uh, we recently adjusted the pricing of our retrofit solar. Uh, so Tesla Solar is the lowest cost solar in the United States. Uh, and we added a lowest, lowest cost guarantee and a money back guarantee. So we're very confident that people will, will have our solar product, whether it's the solar retrofit or solar roof. Um, our solar is now 30% cheaper than the US average. After the federal, federal tax credit, uh, Tesla Solar now costs a dollar forty-nine per watt, um, and uh, it's, a, it's a very simple, highly automated, single-click experience. So definitely um, think about uh, Tesla, whether you want a new roof or Tesla Solar roof, or you want solar on your existing roof. Either way, uh, we're, the, we're, the, we're the company to go to, um, and. Um, and then you can also get a power wall and, and, and have energy independence and, and be your own utility. So I think that, that product is really coming together um, and it's only going to get better later this year. So it's just, it's just very excited about that, that uh, business potential. On the you know, um, if additional technology stuff, we introduced the first uh, uh, production car with more than 400 miles range. So the current Tesla Model S uh, now has an EPA certified range of 402 miles. Uh, I mean, you, basically you can drive from LA to San Francisco nonstop and still have some uh, mile, miles left over when you arrive. And, and this, this is at highway speeds. So you don't have to do anything, uh, drive slowly or anything. You just drive, you just drive normally and, and uh, you know, go very, very long distances. Um, and then for full self-driving, we launched traffic lights and stop signs, uh, and we continue to improve that and make it more robust. Um, and we're currently uh, testing 
whole self-driving software for uh, intersections and city streets and narrow streets. So um, I, I personally test the the latest alpha build of full self-driving software when I when I drive my car, um, and it is really I think profoundly better than people realize. Um, Near Boston, alarming video that state police say shows extremely dangerous behavior. A man and woman both apparently asleep in the front seat as their Tesla seems to keep driving, presumably in autopilot mode. Dakota Randall says the car was doing 55 miles per hour. I did a double take, looked over, and sure enough, this guy was just head between his legs, completely asleep. It's happened before. In June, this driver was asleep at the wheel of a Tesla on the 405 in Los Angeles. In 2018, a Tesla driver slammed into the back of a stopped fire engine. The NTSB blamed driver inattention and over-reliance on the driver assistance system. Yeah, really profoundly better. It's, it's, it's like amazing. So um, it's almost getting to the point where I, I can go from my house to work with no interventions, uh, despite going through construction and widely varying uh, situations. Um, so this is why I, I, I'm very confident about full self-driving functionality uh, being complete by the end of this year, it, it isn't, because I'm literally driving it. Um, in conclusion, uh, uh, I'd like to again say thanks for all the hard work of the Tesla team. The energy business collectively is bigger than the automotive business. So you say like, you know, how, how big is the energy sector? It's bigger than automotive. Um, so. And, and in order to achieve a sustainable energy future, we have to have sustainable energy generation, uh, which I think is going to be primarily solar uh, and, and, you know, set, followed by wind. And those are intermittent, so you need to have a lot of batteries to store the, um, store the energy because the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. So, uh, so there's like three elements of the sustainable energy future. Wind and solar, sustainable energy generation, uh, battery storage, and electric transport. Those three things. Um, and the mission of Tesla is to accelerate sustainable energy. So bat battery and solar will both be enormous. Um, and they kind of have to be in order for us to have a sustainable future. Uh, and we've got a great product roadmap on that front as well. So we've been shipping the mega pack. It's very well received. Um, yeah, do you want to talk about that? Um, yeah, I, I think the the Megapack is has represented itself and, and is uh, an integrated, rapidly deployable, you know, grid tied storage battery of mega megawatt hour scale. Um, uh, we're working with utilities, large and small, you know, not just utilities, but also just like microgrid and project developers of all type, and building our own um, projects where it makes sense. Um, and uh, there's there's a lot of demand for the product, and we're growing the production uh, rates as, as fast as we can for that product. And then on AutoBidder, AutoBidder is is basically autopilot for grid tied batteries. It's an autonomous energy market participation system that you know does high frequency trading and ensures. Well, that, that, that's a bad word. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. High frequency trading should be called front running. Sorry, uh, we're not, not doing it's that. Not doing anything like that. No, it's, <laughs> it's ensuring that the battery is doing everything it can to manage the grid intermittency yes. of the renewals, renewables, and just grid intermittency of all kinds. I mean, you know, people turn their lights on and off, power plants turn on and off, yeah. factories ramp up and down, and batteries are great to so, to solve those problems. Yeah, it, it just it does grid stabilization, yeah. you know, at the millisecond level. Exactly. Uh, so. It, it just ensures that things are super smooth. Um, it's, it's like a, you know, UPS, an uninterruptible power supply of enormous size. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But just it just ensures that this the grid has smooth sailing, um, and then the, the the batteries, you know, the computers like all interact with each other and, and, and make sure that they're working together to make the grid uh, smooth. Um, and this can be done with the power walls. And, and the mega packs and the power packs all working together um, and interacting with third party uh, systems as well. Yeah, centrally or distributed, it does both. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we've, yeah. I mean, it's just necessary in order to solve the sustainable energy problem. So. Yeah, you can't plan power plants on the hourly scale in a renewable world. You need to plan, you need to 
optimize them on a minute by minute scale, and that's what we're doing. We expect to expand our business with Panasonic, with CATL, with LG, possibly with others, um, um, and uh, you know, and there's a lot more to say on that front on Battery Day. Thank you. And uh, the second question is, uh, now that it's time to bring the Tesla Semi to volume production, can you share more detail on production plans? What weekly production rate is considered volume production, and uh, when does Tesla expect to reach that? So it's really about nickel. Things like the Tesla Semi um, and, and uh, you know, other projects that require higher energy density. So. Well, I'd just like to reemphasize, emphasize, you know, any mining companies out there, please mine more nickel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wherever you are in the world, please mine more nickel. And, and, and don't wait for nickel to go back to some long, some high point that you experienced some five years ago or whatever. Go for efficient, you know, as environmentally friendly nickel mining at high volume. If Tesla will give you a con giant contract for a long period of time, <laughs> if you m mine nickel efficiently and in, in an environmentally sensitive way. <laughs> so, hopefully, this message goes out to all mining companies. Uh, please get nickel. <laughs> um, what raw material does Tesla need? What component does Tesla need in every other electric vehicle manufacturer? in the entire world. Well, first, of course, it needs batteries. And second, what are batteries made of? Well, they're made of nickel. I recently did videos on my top nickel mining stocks and top large cap lithium mining stocks. So you can check those videos out on the links below. In addition, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you give it a big thumbs up. That really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, which allows me to create more great content like this for you guys. In addition, if you want more investing tips and exclusive stock market picks, which I personally am investing into, then you should definitely subscribe to this channel and turn that notification bell on. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Invest safe.